Welcome back to Refresh Concepts with me, Dinesh Modi. Let's move on with K method. Now, children, this particular method will be used uh, when we go ahead with two proof sums. So, the questions will be certain LHS and RHS will be given to you. You are expected to prove LHS is equal to RHS in ratio proportion. Now, the question arises that there are two ways. In fact, there are two ways to answer, two ways to answer your two proof sums. One is, I have already stated earlier when I was giving you the basic concept of proportion, right? So if you are not aware, once again, I want you to refresh your concepts. Watch that particular slide completely where I gave you the entire basic concepts of proportion and continued proportion over there I mentioned. Though I'm going to reiterate the same thing over here. And the second is by K method, right? So coming back to our topic, if we are being asked to prove certain things, LHS is equal to RHS, there are two ways. One is, I'll discuss here and the second is K method, right? So let's start, let's start. Given to me by K method for proportion, for continued proportion. Again, both are being explained to you simultaneously so that you can understand the difference between them. If A, B, C, D are in proportion, this is what is given to us. If A, B, C, D are in proportion, then A by B is equal to C by D, right? What is the first method? If you want to prove A, B, C, D are in proportion, if you want to prove A, B, C, D are in proportion, then prove that A, D is equals to B, C, as I discussed earlier, right? And if you want to prove LHS is equals to RHS by K method, prove LHS is equals to RHS by K method, what are we going to do is, here we introduce it. By K method, let A by B is equals to C by D, which is K. But natural, every ratio has some kind of value. Every, every ratio has some kind of value. So here we are saying that let A by B is equal to C by D, which is equals to K. What is K? K is any non-zero constant. K is any non-zero constant. It can be positive, negative, whatever it is. Right? It's a non-zero constant. What are we doing thereafter? We are taking the extreme right, which is C by D. Let C by D is equals to K. When I say A by B is equal to C by D, which is equals to K, that means each ratio is K. So we are starting with extreme right. C by D is equals to K, which implies D gets multiplied with K on cross multiplication. C is equals to DK. On cross multiplication, C is equals to DK. And the left hand side, A by B is equals to K. What I get, A is equals to BK. So whenever we are dealing with LHS and RHS, that is two proof sums, wherever, and that two of proportion, mind you, that two of proportion, wherever I see C, I should replace it by DK after writing everything by K method. Mind you, this should be your part of your solution. This should be your initial part of the solution. Thereafter, wherever you see C, you are supposed to write it or replace it by DK. Wherever you see A, you are supposed to replace it by BK. Now the question arises, sir, what are we going to replace for A and D? Sorry, B and D, B and D. We have no replacement for B and D. B will be written as B only. D will be written as D only. I repeat, B will be written as B. D will be written as D. It's only that C will be replaced by DK. A will be replaced by BK. Right? We are going to see many, many sums. Whereby which you'll understand how that K method works when it comes to two proof. Right? Let's move on to for continued proportion. As we are now aware the difference between proportion and Continued proportion. So if A by A, B and C are in continued proportion, what is the outcome? A by B is equal to B by C. If I want to prove A, B, C to be in continued proportion, we have already seen some sums, then what I need to prove it? B square is equal to A, C. If in my question, if I happen to prove B square is equal to A, C, then my A, B, C are in continued proportion, right? That's what we had learned in the previous video. Today, by K method, on the same lines, mind you, on the same lines. Let A by B is equal to B by C, which is K. Same thing, where K is any non-zero constant. Now here, in this case, we could have taken A by B first, C by D later on. But I kept on saying, children, if you had listened to me very carefully, move on to your extreme right and take that first. So extreme right, take that first and go to the left-hand side. Here, either you take left-hand side or right-hand side. 
doesn't make any difference but yes it does make difference here always pick up the extreme right extreme right always pick up the extreme right so a by b is equal to b by c which is k i'm picking up the extreme right b by c is equals to k b by c is equals to k on the same lines on cross multiplication b is equal to ck b is equal to ck so wherever there is b i shall replace it by ck equation number 1 now i take the extreme left what is extreme left a by b so a by b can also be equated with k that's what we have done which implies a is equal to bk but already b is nothing but ck so a is bk then after a is equals to instead of writing b can we substitute the value of b which is ck dot k so what is the value of a a is equal to ck square that's my equation number 2 so do we have any replacement for do we have any replacement for uh, b sorry for a replacement for a b half do we have any have any replacement for c we don't have any replacement for c c will be written as c only wherever i am being given that the terms are in continued proportion i am being asked to prove i am being asked to prove lhs is equals to rhs my a shall be replaced by ck square my b shall be replaced by ck what about my c c will be written as c only c will be written as c only what if there are three terms three numbers in continued proportion right a by b is equal to c by d is equal to e by f i want you to gauge it orally a by b is equal to c by d is equal to e by f you know what will happen one more equation will come e by f is equal to k therefore e is equal to f k e is equal to f k but what if i have four terms in continued proportion a by b is equal to b by c is equal to c by d continued proportion four terms a b c d so a by b is equal to b by c is equal to c by d so what the equation will change a by b is equal to b by c is equal to c by d which is equal to k take the extreme right and what is that extreme right i want you people and that's the reason i have not written it out what is the, what is the extreme right the extreme right is c by d so c by d is equal to k which implies c is equals to dk your equation number 1 then comes mid value then comes mid value b by c is equals to k then what is b ck but c is already dk so what is b dk square likewise what is a direct answer a is going to be ck cube a is going to be ck cube so if there are three terms if there are four terms highest degree of k will be 3 if there are five terms highest degree of k will be 4 and everywhere you are going to get answer in terms of last term that is here the last term was c so if the last term was d i would have got c is equal to dk b is equals to dk square and a is equals to dk cube every single term will be in terms of last term and the degree of k will increase thereafter i hope you got it but we are not going to have in there are many boards we don't have four terms in continued proportion we have only three yes at times if on the higher order sums there might they might ask even four terms even five terms i have given you the basics for that also right just pay attention to k method mainly this k method is used for to prove sums got it